Hello guys, welcome back to Zodiac Trading Channel. So, uh, as you can see, this channel has changed the name. Uh, right now, we are uh, calling our channel as uh, Zodiac Trading. Uh, so, I hope you guys get noticed. So, uh, but we wouldn't change the uh, course. And the reason why we started this channel is to deliver the highest and original uh, content to traders around the world. Okay, so um, today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at yen. We're going to look at the yen and we're going to discuss the logic behind dollar yen. Okay, so right now dollar yen is trading at around 140. And as I have mentioned before, I have told that my students and most of the members in my communities that Japanese yen is going to hit further below which is likely traded at 140 and the reason why uh, Japanese yen is going to uh, be depreciate to that range is because um, the Japanese central bank was adopting a monetary policy framework basically to cut you know to cut all, all of the uh, you know technical jargons and really complicated terms that it means that the the Bank of Japan would remain easing when dollar continue to get strengthened, and when the Fed decided to uh, raise interest rate and further kind of uh, tightening the balance sheet, the the Japanese government and also the Japanese central bank would continue to ease Japanese yen to the 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 consequence and the direct results. Is that the Japanese economies was suffering a very very difficult, uh, I would say, kind of depression for uh, you know thirty to forty years, and it happened for a very long time. And Japanese economy system uh, doesn't really have the chance to have any input inflation, so that would be a problem. So uh, that we that is basically the reason why Japanese yen will maintain low when dollar goes up. Basically, uh, the the central bank leaders believe that will bring Japanese economy some of the healthy inflation, so the economy system could continue to rise and operate. Okay, so uh, right now what we are facing here is yen cratering. To 140 per dollar, and that is definitely a new ground because right now Japanese central bank uh, should really consider if uh, they are going to let Japanese yen uh, going further down or they are going to have a direct intervention. But uh, if we, uh, according to what the uh, prime minister and also the the head of uh, central bank. Uh, said uh, what they're going to do is they're going to uh, continue to ease the Japanese yen. They're not going to, Kuruta-san, he's not going to stop easing the um, Japanese economy. So I would say uh, from directly, if we refer back to the Jackson Hall meeting, which is a very, very important meeting, that we use this meeting to understand what they would probably do uh, in the future. Okay, we kind of understand how what their attitude is towards the inflation crisis, towards the global economy issues. That is a very important way for traders to kind of understand uh, what to trade and how to trade and when to trade by understanding and reading uh, the messages uh, delivered, you know, from these uh, governors and also from the central banks. So uh, right now. Since the Japanese yen was currently trading at 140, it is the uh, lowest for a, a, a quite a long decade. And so, what would be the problem? The, the first problem would be um, if Japanese yen continue to uh, depreciate further, the corporations and also the business would have suffer more because they simply have to pay more money to you know pay for the food. They're gonna pay for the energy. And with the current situation that the energy price is going up and the food crisis currently taking place in Japan, as I have mentioned in the last video, 
I was I was basically explaining why right now uh, we have a uh, food crisis around the world and also uh, we have to uh, especially pay attention to Japanese food crisis because ja right now Japanese system uh, doesn't seem to have enough food reserve so the consequence would be the weakening yen would continue to you know add more pressures and burden to uh, you know individuals when they're buying you know food they're going for daily consuming they're going to uh, experience that kind of inflation not like um, just like European people right if you're right now living in Japan that you know that a lot of uh, food and their, their this rations simply be cut off so and the second direct results would be if the uh, Japanese yen continue to depreciate um, we would note that you know they have a lot of hot money they're going you know to Japan there'll be people buying properties and people buying uh, assets in Japan simply because Japanese yen is very cheap so if you kind of uh, buy a house or in Tokyo or maybe uh, in Sapporo and all these places or Kyoto then you will probably pay less money if you're uh, holding like holding foreign currency that you will exp you will actually find out that Japanese yen is very cheap and you can actually you know buy more with less money and a third direct results would be um, if Japanese yen continue to slump and getting worse that um, the currency purchase value and, and the purchase power will require a direct intervention so um, that would probably you know if if that kind of curve goes really steep that's probably gonna cause a lot of Asian financial crisis because of the currency because uh, as we all know Japanese yen is a uh, is a rather sensitive financial instruments when it comes to carry trade because there were, uh, a lot of traders would borrow low and sell high they would basically trade yen as well and that kind of hot money with that kind of very hot inflation right now Japan has three percent of inflation so that's probably gonna become a very very big problem okay so here you see the historical fall yen is experiencing its worst drawdown ever so even if Japan wants to intervene in the markets, the U.S. won't agree to do to it, because the current yen's level is appropriate given the levels of treasury yields. Uh, Takeda said, if they go in on un unilaterally and fail, speculator will pray on it. So the fourth thing that the fourth consequences is that. I think both of the Japanese yen and the both of the Japanese bond yields going to become a prey for international speculator because they will probably bet on that Bank of Japan making another mistake by betting that they couldn't control, they couldn't, you know, suppress that kind of yield curve any longer. Therefore, they're probably gonna, you know, other the international speculator probably, you know. They will speculate on the currency, they will speculate on the yen, they will speculate on the uh, Japanese treasury. So you never know what happened if the speculators step uh, and kind of intervene with the current scenario. So right now Japan is facing, the Japanese economy is facing a series of big problems. Okay, they are facing a lot of, they are facing a lot of challenges. And right now, I, I believe a lot of traders and investors should be aware of it. And potentially, if you're smart enough, you can take advantage of the current situation. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe and press that like button for me. And please, please share the video because uh, your support is the is how I you know, how I can continue uh, to to make more of these kind of videos to you guys. So I will see you next episode. Bye.